Hey guys, uh, good afternoon. Um, happy Sunday today. Sorry I didn't get this video out earlier this weekend. I decided to do a project on our home of redoing the kitchen and it actually took me a bit longer to sand everything down and do what I was expecting to. Um, but anyways, just quick recap. My last episode was on... I spaced for a second. Uh, oh yeah, just about who my father was and just kind of a few things more on like the history of just how he reacted to things. So if you missed that, go back, take a look. It kind of explains a lot of it. Um, he was just very, like, I can't diagnose him because I don't know, but I would say bipolar and narcissistic. Uh, so anyways, that's what happened last week. Today is going to be a little bit of a harder day. Um, excuse me if you keep looking right over here. My notes per usual because with the toddler and if you hear music in the background, it's because my boy's got his show on to distract him so I can do this. Um, but today I actually am going to talk more about the sexual abuse. Um, and it's probably something I put off because I keep trying to, with these episodes, you know, change it between what happened to me, make it, make not make them all so dark. Uh, so yeah. Here we go. So, anyways, um, we know that the abuse started when I was 13 uh, with that first story. It very soon led to him um, asking me, but it wasn't really a choice, uh, to go in his room while he did his manly thing. And I would just face the doorway. For some reason, I just had stood in there. But it wasn't long until it was turned around and faced me. So that happened. But then shortly after that was take your shirt off. Now, one of the funny things about being topless at 14 is I don't have boobs as it is right now at 27 years old. So how do you think I was at 14 years old? So he also had me move closer. So here I am at this point just standing here at the end of his bed. Topless, 14, scared, young. Hold on. My kid tried escaping outside. Um, so anyway, so here I am at the edge of his bed, at like 14 years old, not formed, not anything, just scared, couldn't say anything, just stood there. Uh, so, then, this is when I go weird, he asked me to start talking to him. <laughs> I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what talking to him meant, I'm like, okay, today at school, like, he's like, no, like, dirty talk to me, and I just... What do you want me to say? <laughs> he would tell me, like, pretty much, like, a porno. Like, yeah, say this, say that. Like, this is, I want you to tell me this. I want you to tell me this story. And so now it's awkward. I don't even know what I'm talking about. At this time, like, I hadn't even kissed a boy at this time. Like, dirty talk. Nothing, none of, none of this. Like, I had stayed away from boys. I didn't even know what I was doing. So, my father's having me dirty talk to him when here we are supposed to be church going. So, honestly, like, I felt really gross. I felt really vile, vile and foul and just like a nasty person, honestly. Like, it was... Was, those times were really hard. Um, sure enough, you guessed it. Uh, he had me just pretty much in my panties, standing there, watching him dirty talk. And like I said, a lot of this, it probably was a progression over the year and a half to two years, roughly. So I feel like most of this started happening when I hit about 15 is when more of like the deeper stuff. Um, so it was something that kind of happened mostly on weekends. I feel like just kind of when he was home in the morning and just relaxing in the morning. Uh, he always had to get up earlier. I mentioned that before. Um, and so for work, but for the weekends. And then it just kind of got to the point where eventually he was coming home and going up into his room. The sad thing was is that he always would lock the door, right? So we'd go in the bedroom and he'd lock the door and we'd be in there for a while. Like, what else... What could have been going on? But my family didn't care. They sat downstairs and they just were walks or in a different room watching TV or whatever. My mom didn't care because the pressure wasn't on her. She didn't seem to want to like protect me. And that's honestly something that I still really struggle with. But 
Um, I don't know if she knew exactly what was going on at that time, or if she had any idea, or if she had an idea and didn't care. She still won't be honest with me, so I don't know. Um, after a while of me just standing in my underwear, giving him dirty talk and feeling like his sex slave. I was a sex slave, I did. He eventually needed a little bit more to fill his narcissistic mind. Um, this is honestly probably where the story gets the hardest for me. Um, I still have a lot of nightmares. But then one day, he asked me to touch him. Um, he asked, he just, like, touch it? And, no, like, this is what you have to do, like... This is how you're going to make me happy. Like, um, just the images of just feeling so just gross. Like, I don't know other words, but just, I just felt like I wanted to like rip it off and fucking, I just, sorry. I just. It was hard, um, so he had me, that's when he had me just start doing it for him, um, and it almost, like I said, became a daily thing. Like, afterwards, I don't know if I felt more relieved that it was over with, or that I just wanted to go throw up because I was so disgusted with myself, like... It was just something that I had to do that I, I didn't, I didn't have to do. And that's the point of this. I didn't have to do it. And I could have said something sooner. So I didn't have to go through as much as I did. And that's why I hope people watch these videos and they see, oh, I don't have to do that. I don't have to live that life. I just, you don't have to. You don't have to. I didn't have to, but I was scared and I did. So... Um, he was, like I said before, very narcissistic, so he just made everybody feel guilty if it wasn't his way, like, you were the bad person. So, he almost threw, like, toddler tantrums, um, he, so with that, he would get very, um, be very rude, and you don't want to make me happy, and I just, like I've stated before, I feared for my life, so... Yeah, this stuff has been super hard. Um, I try to actually keep these videos raw. I could edit them more, I guess. But I want you guys to see how it truly affects me still. Um, but just, I just want raw emotion there. Because me having it, like, like I said, I have my notes. I have my bullet points to remember to say certain things, um, but yeah, I just, <laughs> I'm me, and I'm working on change in a positive way every day, every day it's a battle, every day there's something that I feel like I can do to better myself, some days it's really hard, and I don't want to keep going, but I will tell you that each morning I wake up, and I see this little beautiful boy, and I just get another day to breathe our fresh air and I'm just extremely grateful. I'm extremely grateful that the times that I tried to kill myself, um, actually, you know what, I'll tell you those stories real fast. When I was 16, I just one night took a bottle of Excedrin. I didn't really know what it was going to do to me, but I hope it was enough, enough, enough to overdose and feel sick and just not wake up. So I ended up taking a entire bottle, just chugged it, and I remember like, I don't, I don't even remember how much longer, I just felt really sick, and I threw up, and I went to bed, um, just pretty much hoping that what I took, <laughs> what I took worked. Sure enough, I woke up. I was fine. I was fine the next day, so that was one. And then another time is after I graduated when I was down in New Mexico, 
I was so miserable. This is when things got super extreme with my father. Um, and I didn't know what to do. And I was literally like prisoner in his room. And so I had a perfume bottle and I chugged it. And it was hard to get down. It was very nasty and hard. Like, oh, like chugging a bottle of alcohol. But I did. And once again, I was extremely sick. And I threw up a couple times. And I passed out. And I woke up again. So that's when I switched to the try to escape, escape mentality because I didn't think I was ever going to break free. So after I realized that God has a purpose for me, that I'm supposed to be here for some reason, I worked towards it. And you know what? My life has come so far, even in just the last six years, um, the amount that I've grown, learned, and I uh, just achieved, I'm just extremely grateful for. And you know what? You have to go out and be willing to grab it. You have to go get it. And I appreciate everybody that sits and watches these these, these things. Um, like I said, hopefully they all won't be so dark. I'm looking to create more content for my YouTube here in a little bit. Um, I'm just trying to wrap up some things I got going. Especially as far as building and all of the redo stuff in the kitchen. But anyways, love you all, have a good weekend, and I'll have the next video soon.